welcome to episode 50 of Tales of Yarnia. My name is Hannah, I'm coming to you from Cheltenham in the UK, which is where I live with my other half, Jimmy, and our yellow Labrador, Jonah. So, it's been a little while. Um, I think it's been nearly, maybe two months since I last podcast, maybe six weeks. It's been well over a month though, and uh, I'm really sorry it's been that long since I've been able to chat with you all. Um, thank you so much for checking out my podcast if you're a new viewer. I really hope you enjoy what I've got to show you, and uh, make sure you give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you do enjoy it. And also a big, big thank you and welcome back to any returning viewers. It's so lovely to have you back. and. I can't wait to dive into all the things I've got to show you. So social media wise, I am Yarnia Designs on Instagram and Ravelry. And you can also find my knitting patterns on Ravelry too. Although I know there have been accessibility issues with people using the new Ravelry sort of setup. Um, so if you're unable to use Ravelry at the moment and there are any of my patterns you are interested in, um, please send me an email and I would be happy to help out with any information you need or even purchasing a pattern um, via email. I'm happy to do that so that you don't have to use Ravelry. So um, yeah, most of my patterns you can probably see on Instagram. I'll uh, try and add them all to my designs uh, story highlight thing to make that a bit easier for you. So, um, the reason I've been away or sort of um, out of the social media sort of scene for a little while is I'm still having issues with my arm and elbow. So I, I'm still off work with it at the moment. It's um, been quite a long time um, and it's been quite a slow recovery as well. Um, so it's just, it's just one of those things where I've just got to keep resting and I've got physio exercises to do, which is good. And hopefully slowly I'll get there. But um, yeah, it's made crafting a little bit of a challenge, um, at least to start with. And I've found, like, now found comfortable ways of um, keeping my elbow um, supported and comfortable um whilst I'm able to do bits and pieces so um hopefully Jimmy will be helping me to if this needs any editing um it might be minimal editing on this because I am struggling to use a computer so um hopefully he is going to be able to help me with that so if I've got some editing in there um it's all <laughs> thanks to Jimmy so uh yeah um, I've got some tea today. I'm just going to have a sip. It's a, we had a little order from um, Bird and Blend. We splashed out on a few uh, new to us teas. And um, the, my favourite so far, which I've got today, um, is Cherry Bakewell, which is a white tea. Um, and I think it's got obviously cherries and almond and lots of things like that. It's really sweet, um, but it's really, really nice and I'm enjoying it. So I hope you are all doing well. I know there's been a lot going on in the world since I last spoke to you. Um, so, got my tea. I've got so much to show you. Just because a lot of it's acquisitions because I've been at home, I've just been sort of making some purchases <laughs> and um, yeah as a way of sort of cheering myself up some of the time so um, I do have one FO to show you though but before I get onto that I'll just let you know what I'm wearing this is my um, latest sweater design which is called Lonicera um, and I don't know how well you can see but it's got um, lace panels which run down both sides. Um, and then it's also got a lace panel on the back, which uh, I don't know if I can show you. You can see. You 
can see it. And want to kind of avoid standing up if I can, because it just it's hard to get up and down. So uh, because Joan is like right behind me as well, so if I move the chair, he's gonna be up. <laughs> so I don't want to disturb him, but if when I view this back, you can't see, um, I'll get a picture put in of the back so that you can see that. So, oh, and it's also got some textured bits um, under each side of the sweater as well. Um, yeah, there's plenty of pictures of it on my Instagram. Um, so go and have a look at those if you want to see what it's like. But it's like a fairly loose fitting um, sweater in fingering weight, knit from the bottom up. And it's a drop shoulder, so it's quite a nice flowy sort of garment if uh, that's what you're interested in. Um, what else? Oh yeah, the yarn which I used for this design um, is by Woomy, Woomy? <laughs> Woolly Mammoth Fibre Co. And it's on their, oh what was it? What was the base? I can't remember the name of the base. What was it? I'm sure it was BFL and wasn't Polworth. And I can't remember. Gotland. BFL. I think it was a Gotland BFL. And um, it's just beautiful. All the details are um on the pattern page i think i did also include them on instagram posts about the sweater so um you can check either of those places whichever is easiest for you so yeah i'm really pleased with it and i hope you guys enjoy it too so that's what i'm wearing i've got one finished object to show you which is my latest shawl design which I think the last time I showed, I can't remember where I was the last time I showed it. Um, but I've now finished it. I've not yet managed to write up the pattern because again, I'm struggling. I can't really use a computer very easily at the moment. Um, I'm looking at using some voice uh, activated sort of typing um, but it's going to be very slow, so I'm either going to have to get Jimmy's help or um, just... I don't know if you can hear, there's a really low flying plane of some sort. We've got a, an airfield for like small planes fairly near to where we live. Um, we don't normally get them that noisily, <laughs> but um, I wonder if it's a military plane. You know, on the RAF things, they've been flying around recently, so maybe that's it. I'm gonna have to try and show this. It's gonna be difficult, so I'll just try and uh, drape this over me so I don't have to hold it up with all the weight. There we go, so it's finished, and um, I can't remember where I was up to. Maybe it was here, but it is now completely done. Oh my goodness, it's going to be hard to see. There you go. So it is a triangular shawl. It's knit in sport weight. I've used two different colours of Labiana May on their sport base. Um, and those are the two in the sort of mosaic section here. So well, you can see them here as well. The dark uh, sort of semi-solid is their ash colorway, I think. And I think this other one, the sort of, it's a light gray with purpley tones and blues. And it's uh, Le Petit Noir, I believe. And then the other colour which I've used, which is this really variegated blue, 
Um, that one is Primrose Yarn Co on their sport base. And I think it was a one of a kind uh, colorway, so it doesn't have a name. Uh, so yeah, it's um, a huge shawl, but it's gonna be super warm um, when it gets back down to shawl weather. I don't know if you can see, it's got quite a few different sections. So there's a lot to keep you interested. Um, I found it quite interesting to knit. I'm using mosaic knitting, which um, is all done with slip stitches. So it looks like color work, but you're only ever using one color per row. And it, the fancy bits are sort of done by just slipping stitches, which is really fun. So that all of the zigzaggy sections, like over here, those are mosaic knitting. These sections with colour work, that's mosaic knitting. Ooh. And then we've got a bigger section, which is um, basically the same as the first one, mosaic knitting. And then down here, I've done a simple lace section with a bit of garter as well, just to make it extra squishy. Um, so, yeah. I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. I just need to get the pattern written up so that it can go into testing. That's the goal, but that's a bit of a challenge at the moment. So um, you might have to bear with me for a little bit. I know um, my friend um, Shanti of the Shanti Knits podcast, I think she was keen on testing this one for me. <laughs> she was like, <laughs> I remember her saying at one point to uh, get that official design out, so uh, I will try my best because I think she was keen to try this one. So yeah, it's it's going to be a decent size. It like goes down to the bottom of my back um, when I've got it on like this, so it's super cozy. <laughs> I love it. So. Yeah, that's my only FO. So I've been trying to take it easy. Um, so that is currently unnamed. I've got a couple of ideas um, floating around in my head for the name. I've not even woven in the ends either yet, but um, I've not completely decided on a name. I've got a few ideas, but I haven't picked one yet. So, uh, yeah, there we go. I'll just pop that there and give my arm a bit of a break. <laughs> so, right. Oh, tastes just like Cherry Bakewell. Okay, I've got quite a few whips because I haven't really stuck to just one thing. I've been trying to do a little bit of quite a few things. Um, what should I show you first? Hmm. This is a problem. <laughs> okay, I'll show you... I'll stick with the shawls. I'll show you the crochet shawl which I started. Ooh. Going down? No. no. It's okay. That was me. It was me knocking something off the table. Sorry, that was me. Okay, you lie down. You lie down. You're here. Yeah, shake it off. <laughs> Good boy. I think he thought it was the door. It wasn't. I accidentally knocked a box, which I didn't realise had been balanced on top of this. But anyway, this is a project bag which I've had for, feels like forever, um, by a homespun house. I just love it because it has um, llamas or alpacas. Not sure which. I think they're llamas. Living in here is a shawl, which is a crocheted shawl, and it uses three colours. And I've not worked on this for a little while because I sort of fell out with it because I went wrong. 
Um, it's completely my fault not understanding and remembering how to count crochet stitches or when you're increasing and decreasing. So it's a really interesting construction though. Um, so this is where, where I got so far. And I know my friend Nessa from um, the Kill to Craft podcast um, is also crocheting this at the moment and she's got a very similar colour scheme to me. So that's really, really fun. Um, but yeah, you start off with a little square and um, at the moment, I think this, right, this bit I did fine on. It was the bit over here where you're meant to sort of increase into a point. I didn't increase enough, sorry, decrease. In, you decrease out to a point. Um, I'll show you, I'll insert a picture of the finished shawl here because I'm not going to be very good at explaining and making shapes. <laughs> uh, but so yeah, you, you have your square here and then you're supposed to, it then goes to a triangle on the side and then it, the whole thing is sort of mirrored in different colours on the opposite side. It will just make more sense if I put a picture in. Um, the issue I had, I made this mistake three times, even though I thought I did different things each time, um, was I wasn't decreasing uh, quickly enough. So the first time I did all my decreases, got it out to a triangle and my triangle was like twice as long as it was meant to be. And I hadn't realized when I was crocheting it. So I thought, oh, okay, I'm not gonna have enough yarn to finish the rest of the shawl with the, just the three colors. Um, so I had to rip back. I wouldn't have been bothered otherwise if I would have managed to continue and have enough yarn, but I did not. I knew I would not have enough yarn. I weighed the skein, the left, what I had left, and it was not enough. So, um, yeah, it was heartbreaking having to uh, rip it out. And then I did the same thing again. Nearly got to the end, did that again, thought, right, I am going to manage it this time. Thought I was doing it right. I was counting my stitches each, the first few rows, and it was, seemed okay. And then when I got a bit further, I was like, no, it's, it's doing it again. So um, this is currently in timeout whilst I get the willpower to <laughs> um, face it again, because it's completely my fault. I just can't, I'm not used to, doing um, crochet decreases where you have to count your stitches. I think where I fell down was I wasn't sure when the last stitch was, um, like what counted on the decrease areas as a stitch. Um, that bit just must have confused me. So um, it's completely my fault. I love the colors. I forgot to tell you what they are. They're all Mr. B's yarn. So the pinky one, which is, sorry about the messy cake. This gorgeousness is honeysuckle, I think. Um, the lighter of the bluey greens with like the pops of like neon green. I think that's pick E out the ye stingers. <laughs> I'm not, it's a Bristolian saying, and I'm not from Bristol. So I don't fully know whether I said that right. Um, that is another, a messy cake of that. <laughs> and this one, I can't quite remember. It's a ball. Ah, it's mint in it. That one, mint in it. That's a gorgeous colour. I really love this one. And I think the way they're working up together is really, really lovely as well. I've just messed it up and uh, I've attempted that bit so many times. I've just, 
Um, can't face it at the moment. <laughs> I need some success stories. <laughs> so um, it's in time out and we will see what happens with it. So yeah, I really hope I do uh, come back to this soon because um, it's just such an interesting uh, construction and it's really fun to crochet up. I just need to um, get my head around how to do those bits. So, yeah. I forgot to say what the shawl was. It's the Gemini Twins Reborn shawl by Kalisha of, I think it's Kalisha Ryan, um, of the uh, Quirky Monday craft cast, which um, is a really lovely um, sort of crochet and knitting and all sorts of craftiness um, podcast on YouTube. So if you've not seen that, I would definitely go and check that out. Okay, that's one of the many whips. And next one, we'll stick with shawls. We'll do the shawl section. And this one is really, really exciting. It's living in my Garden Birds um, project bag by Emma of Elden Woodcraft. It's absolutely gorgeous. And the lining. Living in here is my wedding shawl. So, some obviously people who've been watching for a while will know we are planning to get married in November of this year. Um, we're hoping at the moment that it will still be going ahead uh, with everything that's happened this year. It's all, everything's all a bit crazy and up in the air. You don't know whether we're going to have second waves and all that sort of thing, but um, at the moment things are looking okay and we've got a very small um, celebration, literally just um, pretty much immediate family, so we're hoping it will be okay to uh, carry on. So we've carried on planning and I have once again picked up the shawl which I have planned um, for me to wear on the day. So I'll show you upside down because that's a bit easier. This is the Landskane shawl by... Who was it by? I'll include it on the screen but it's um, a really really gorgeous pattern. Every row of the lace is different, so it is complicated and needs brain power and concentration to focus on it, but it is just working up so beautifully. I will try and show you the correct way around, but I have a feeling it's gonna go all funny with the needles. It's kind of difficult to show, but it's um, a lace weight shawl, which is going to make it so light and airy and delicate. I think the lace hopefully will look exquisite once it's blocked. So this has been one of my main whips that I'm focusing on at the moment. Oh, it is so pretty. And I'm hoping to have it ready by the time I go for my uh, next dress fitting so that we can sort of see how everything will fit together. So that's the shawl. That's where I'm up to so far. I think there are six lace charts in total and I'm on, I'm now just starting the fifth lace chart. So I'm about two thirds of the way through the lace. Obviously, it's a crescent-shaped shawl, so um, you increase quite a bit each row. So they're getting longer and longer, but I'm enjoying it. It's um, it's really straightforward to follow, and uh, yeah, I think the designer goes by the name the Lace 
eater or something on um, Instagram. Is it Mary Ann Mace? I think that might be right. Um, but I just love how it's working out. And this yarn is just gorgeous. This was um, dyed up for me as a custom colourway uh, by my lovely friend Sophie of Pixie Yarns. And this is the ball here. It's, um, she doesn't normally do a lace weight base um, regularly in the shop, but she had just this, this one lying around and it happened to be the exact um, fibre content that I wanted. Um, it's super soft. I think it's a cashmere silk merino. Or maybe it's got alpaca. It's like a super soft um, mix like that. And it's just stunning. I just want, I wanted like a really light sort of dusky pink. Um, that's coming along. I think that's everything I need to tell you about that shawl. It's just kind of getting difficult to show because it's just getting bigger and bigger. But yeah, can't wait till that one is finished because that will be a big project of the needles and uh, another thing done for the wedding. So. Uh, right, that, I think those were all of the shawls. <laughs> so we've got a couple of garments and socks to show. Um, what should we go on to next? I'll go on to the Susu. I've not made much progress on this, but I just love it so much and I, so I want to talk about it again. Um, so this is living in my lovely project bag by Hikari of Hikari Handmade. I absolutely love her bags. They are so gorgeous. The fabric is just, has a lovely texture to it as well. I'm not sure how much progress I've made since I last showed you this. Mm, not sure. But I am knitting the Susu, which is a pattern by, I think it's Nora Gorn, who's like the queen of cables, isn't she? So it's got cables and texture and it's gorgeous. It's going to be oversized and lovely once it's done, but I've uh, not made much progress on this, partly because the um, texture of the ribbing and the twisted stitches and the cables and the um, moss stitch. It was sort of a lot of movement for my hand and arm to deal with, so it was a bit difficult. I didn't want it was a bit difficult for me to do too much of. So, um, it's knit in pieces. So this is the back piece. And isn't it just beautiful? The yarn I'm using is Mr. B's yarn, of course, <laughs> and it's the Merlin colourway on the DK base. And isn't it just beautiful the way it's working up? I love it. I've just got such gorgeous speckles. And I've also got a new little acquisition living on there, which is my little hedgehog progress keeper or stitch marker, whichever you want to use it as, um, which is from Hannah of the Corner of Craft. There he is, little hedgehog, He's super cute. So yeah, I think the hedgehog marks possibly where I was up to the last time, which isn't a lot of progress for a couple of months. <laughs> So, um, yeah, here's, here's another thing of the yarn. Those speckles. It's just 
it's cool. This. So, uh, here we go. I, that one is a sort of really indulgent knit for me. Um, I'll just sort of pick up, pick it up and do a couple of stitches every now and then. Um, and just mostly sort of hold and look at the project. <laughs> so yeah, that's my Susu. Just have a sip of tea. I think we might be halfway through the whips now, nearly. Uh, okay. I'm going to move on to socks for a little bit. We've got... Uh, Moving in here, we've got a half finished object. So I've got, this is the, oh sorry, the bag is by Claire, who is one half of um, Mr B's yarn and also the lovely maker behind Bird Street UK. And this is a finished sock for Jimmy. So he uh, really liked just the basic rib pattern, which I did for my granddad um, for last Christmas. And he quite likes fairly neutral colours as well. He doesn't really like bright colours, even on socks, which is just strange to me. <laughs> but no, he really likes the neutrals. So I should have put this on a sock blocker. I might just grab one because Jonah is no longer sat behind me. Gosh. So much easier to see it. <laughs> so there we go. This is one finished sock. And the yarn I used is from Chromatic Yarns, who is also Hannah. Um, sorry, Hannah of the Corner of Craft is also the dyer behind Chromatic Yarns. And this is the what colourway is it? Tresim colourway. So, yeah. Yeah, so just a um, fairly basic sock. Um, it's I'm not following any particular pattern. It's just like a, a five by one rib yeah so the ribbed bit i've just done knit five pearl one all the way around and i think there are plenty of ribbed sock patterns already available um on the internet so i haven't planned on writing this one up just to do that it's just my usual sock recipe which is in all of my sock patterns and then i've just instead of doing stockinette i done five by one rib all the way around and then on the bottom of the sock you can see I've just done stockinette on the um, underside of the foot and the rib pattern has just continued along the top. Uh, heel flap and gusset, standard, uh, two by two rib at the top here and I've just done a normal wedge toe which is my go-to sock recipe. So yeah, he is really pleased with how that's come out and I've only really just started the second sock. Just a sock moustache there. And I've also got my little avocado progress keeper from Hammer of the Corner of Craft on here too. So there we go. That is another whip, but that's just sort of a as and when I feel like doing something super simple sort of project. Okay, right, 
Next up, I've got another pair of socks. And this one is a new design. So I've actually got, I finished one of the socks already. So that's another pattern which I need to write up and I might struggle to do on the computer. So I'm gonna have to do the same as with the other one, whatever I find that works. But uh, I'll just stick the finished one onto the sock blocker so that you can see. And this is a little bit different to my other sock patterns. Um, yeah, I normally have like lace or some texture, but I think this is the first time I've ever done a colour work sock. <laughs> so here we go. I'm going to call them the Autumn Fern socks. Because these, I thought, I designed them to look a little bit like fern leaves, but they also kind of look like Christmas trees. But um, the idea was ferns, so I, that's what I want them to be. So I'm calling them the Autumn Fern socks because of the colours as well and the pattern. So it's a top-down pattern. I could probably do it as a um, toe-up as well, to be fair, if I just change, turn around the colour work chart. But um, yeah, this is actually the first time I've ever knit a colour work sock, I think. And yeah, I, I really like this um, little detail across the toe. And then we've got this on both sides. It just goes all the way around all of the colour work. So yeah, I went up two needle sizes for the colour work sections. Um, I tried going up just one needle size and it was still a little bit tight when I went to go and put it on my foot. Um, the bit I struggle with is getting it over my heel because I think I have quite a high instep. So I went up two needle sizes, um, but I haven't found that it changes the fit of the sock because the bit at the top is still in the normal size I would do for um, a sock. So I think it worked out quite well. But yeah, I hope you like them and uh, those will get written up at some point and hopefully put out into testing. The yarn I've used for those is, so look, here we go, the, I don't know what happened to this cake, but I wound this up years ago and uh, I only used part of the cake, so I had quite a lot left over. Uh, the yarn is Eden Cottage Yarns. I can't remember what the colourway is. Red Kite, I think it's Red Kite, um, and it's on a merino nylon cashmere base. I just love this colour, just beautiful. And I wanted a contrast colour which was still quite neutral, so I looked at my leftover yarns and found this, uh, I think it's Rust Spot. Is the colourway name by Mr B's yarn um, and it was the lightest colour in my rust fade set which I used for my spectre sweater so yeah just got ooh, just got this really neutral colourway just got some little specks of yellow I think you can see yellow there and little bits of brown and grey. So I thought those two um, go together quite nicely and it's a good contrast as well. So we've got that going on. Oh, I did have a little pumpkin progress keeper. I've got to put him on. I've started the second sock here. That's how far I've got. I think this, this yarn and colour just knits up beautifully. And I've got this little pumpkin, which is from Jibbles and Beans. Uh, 
I'm just going to pop it on because it is a bit of an autumnal um, knit. I could have seen a little bit better on the sock. so cute so yeah that's a new design which I I've got underway so I'm gonna have a few test knits coming up I don't know when just need my arm to get better and for life to go back to normal but that's not always how things work out so I'm just gonna have to do the best I can with what I've got so yeah, got one more. Oh no, I've got two more whips. Where's my fucking board by now? <laughs> okay. Next whip is another design which has been in the planning for quite a few months now. And it's living in this gorgeous bag, which was from my friend Claire, who is Claire of Bird Street UK and Mr B's yarn. And it's gorgeous. Love this project bag. It's perfect size for a sweater. This didn't come with it, but I just thought it was so cute and went quite well with <laughs> the colours, so I added that on. Okay, so this is a... I'll show you the yarn first, because I've still got some of them skeined up. This is a sweater collaboration with the lovely Emily of A Knit Away. And she sent me some gorgeous yarn for this. So we've got a fingering weight and a lace weight held together for this. And the fingering weight is a single ply, 100% superwash merino. And the colorway is iced mint. And it's just gorgeous. It's just so pretty. I love it. It's got these gorgeous speckles. So pretty. So we've got some of those. And then we've also got ooh, the lace weight base, which is 74% baby Surrey alpaca and 26% mulberry silk. And it's the rainy mushroom colorway. Look at that. It is just gorgeous. It is like, to quote um, Kristen of Bull and Vine, it's like buttered kittens. It is just so soft. I love it. I just love it. So these two together are creating something really magical. It's just so soft. So it is a sweater design, which I think I already said, and hopefully this is a good place to Point to show you. I might just move that the needles out a little bit. Okay, so Let's see if I can show you. Yeah, there we go. So it's a top-down sweater uh, with raglan shaping. The increases. And I've managed, I'm really proud of myself. I managed to figure out how to do short row shaping for the raglan. Um, because I've not, I don't know if I've done a raglan design before. I've, off, I've knit a raglan sweater before, but the ones I've knit didn't have any short row shaping. So I incorporated short row shaping. Super proud of that. Um, I've got, the main feature for this sweater is this texture, 
which is kind of like nuts. They're not full on bobbles. It's um, similar to my sock design. What were they called? The drip drip drop socks. Similar to that. So hopefully you can see the texture there. They're just these little nuts and they're really simple to knit. Um, they're just super, super soft. And it's just, I, I've wanted this really cozy and soft all over texture sweater for um, quite a while. And here's the back. They're, they're all over the sleeves the front and the back of the sweater so just an all over texture pattern uh, there will be some lace later on but only a tiny bit just a tiny lace detail and uh, isn't it just gorgeous how it's knitting up this colorway these colorways together Be, I think it'll be easier to show once I'm past the split for the sleeves and then it'll look a little bit more like a sweater but um, it's been fairly slow progress on this because I've had um, I wanted to finish the other design first the, the shawl design didn't want to do too much at once either so I've been making sure I give my arm a lot of rest or that when I'm knitting I'm Sort of supporting my arm, got to keep it straight as possible. Um, I've also learned that supporting it under a cushion really, really helps um, so that it's not having to use um, anything in my elbow to hold my arm up in a position, it's just completely rested. So I'm finding that super helpful, which is good. So, yeah, here we go. I just I can't stop looking at this. I sometimes get this out and just look at it because it's so pretty. <laughs> it's so soft. Oh, it's just gorgeous. I love it. I love how it's working up. It's so beautiful. Um, this yarn is just just so lovely to work with and have in your hands. So uh, I'm really enjoying that. Oh, and I have got another. Corner of Craft Progress Keeper and uh, it's a little bumblebee. This one is also an acquisition. So uh, yeah, it's the Corner of Craft fan club over here. <laughs> so yes. Right, I will just. Uh, this is also touching on another acquisition, but I bought some liquor interchangeable needles just because I never have um, enough of the sizes I want. Mm -hmm. And I thought it'd be really nice to have a, like a really nice wooden set as well for more slippy um, yarns and fabric. So I thought I'd give them a spin on this project. And I got the one with three and a half inch tips. So they're pretty small. Um, I never have enough needles for hats, so I thought the three and a half inch tips um, would be really useful for that. And uh, it, the interchangeable set comes with um, mostly smaller size cables, but then it comes with a, what do you call it? Cable joiner. So yeah, it comes with this thing which joins two different cables together so that you've got an extra long cable which is what I've done for this. Um, I have found it slightly fiddly to get my yarn over that bit um, because it's a bit wider. Um, it's sort of nearly as wide as the needles. Um, it's probably because I'm using fairly small needles. But, you know, I'm using 3.75 now for this. So, yeah. But I'm enjoying, I really love the feel of the needles. Um, they're really nice to use. So yeah, I'm happy with that purchase. It comes in this little thing here. I'll just give you a quick, quick look at those. 
yeah, here's all the uh, needle tips. So you get, uh, what is it? All the way from 3.25 mil, which is a US 3, um, all the way up to, where is it? 6.5 mil, which is a US 10 and a half. So you get quite a wide range through there. Yeah, nine different sizes. I've got two of them in use at the moment. I can't remember where the other one is. Hmm. I'm sure only one of the projects I've shown you. Oh, it might be the secret project. Um, I'll touch on that in acquisitions. Yeah. Really, really love this case as well. That's good. Okay. I'll put this away. And... Stop talking about that one now. I could just look at it all day. Hold it. <laughs> okay, so there's only one more whip to show you, and this is a crochet whip. It's a new one. So I put it living in my little Mrs. Well, I say little, it's quite big, this bucket bag. Um, it's a Mrs. Brown's bag. Um, let's see. So I've got all of, this is getting so grown out, it's just some white. What yarn is it? King Cole Comfort 4-ply. I didn't want to spend too much on the white yarn because I had to order about 13 balls of it. So I have started this was when I was mostly doing crochet because I couldn't, uh, my arm was just in so much pain um, that I couldn't really move it at all. Even my hand, it was just really, really bad. I started a Battenberg blanket, which I have wanted to start for the longest time. And I'm so pleased with how it started, like, working up. So, I've just got I've got quite a few mini skeins, some of which I ordered specifically for this project. So I think the mini skeins that I showed last time by Pigment and Ply, all of those are in here. Well, like some of each colourway are now in here. So these purples, this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. So all of the outside ones that you can see are all from the Pigment and Ply um, mini set. And then I've got other bits and pieces. They're all just leftovers. That one there I know is um, The Gingerbread Man by Mr. B's Yarn. Um, that one, ooh. Junk Yarn. That one is Junk Yarn. Um, the colourway is Ray. Uh, that one is the form of the fox and that was a like a mystery club that one i think is the yarn lab that's left over from my dandelion and dogwood advent calendar this one is also the yarn lab mm. then oh, there's like i did order also a mini set from mr b's yarn that should be a drinking game on my when you're watching my podcast. Every time I mention Mr. B's yarn, take a drink. <laughs> oh, I, I should have said that at the start. Um, it probably applies to most of my episodes. So this one, I think is, oh, might be good lightly. Is this one? Ooh, this one. Oh, is that? Oh, that one is, is Mr. Beauty on, but it's not part of the mini set. That one is uh, Snowman, I think. But this one and this one, so all of those blues along that side are Mr. B's yarn. I think there's one which I've not yet added in there. Where is it? Hmm. I've got a 
few squares here to be adding in. So the way this works, I think it's a free pattern. The way it works is, uh, that's the other, it's the Bees Yarn colorway, which I've not yet added in to the blanket. Yeah, the way the Battenberg blanket works is you crochet up the sort of like colorful squares first. Um, and obviously you can see they are then um, each, like one of the variegated squares has um, a white square or a neutral square um, on each uh, side of it. And the way you join is you join as you go. So when, when you come to want to join like four of your colorful squares, you crochet a white square the same as you would one of these, but then after the last round, you attach the surrounding ones, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. Um, yeah, I'm really enjoying this. It's just a lovely project to have in the bucket bag because um, this just lives in a lounge and I can just, if I've got a spare, like 10 minutes, just crochet up a little square, one to add to the collection. And then when I've got a bit more time, I can sit and sort of plan out the next, where I want the next few to go. I sort of want, I've sort of got a bit of a color scheme with this. I'm mostly gonna be sticking to purples, pinks and blues, but obviously you can see there are a few other rogue yellows in there. Um, but yeah, that's that's sort of the, the thing I'm going for. I won't be having any reds or oranges. Mostly blues, purples and pinks is what I'm going for. So that's working out really nicely so far, I think. My arm's getting really tired now. I'm gonna have to finish up soon or we'll just do this one-handed. There we go. really really pleased with how this is working up and it's such a fun project um scrappy project i have still i have still got my other crochet blanket on the go um but there's not loads of progress that's noticeable on that because you just sort of add a few rows and it's taken forever but you don't actually really <laughs> see much of a difference so um yeah if you want to see it, just sort of got this load of minis in here. So, oh, if I just pick out the Mr. B's yarns ones because they are new acquisition, and then I will move on to the rest of my acquisitions then. Where are they? That's one. This should be five. That's one. One of them is hiding for me. I don't know where it is. Where has it gone? I can't have lost it. Jonah, what have you done with it? have used it in anything else. Hmm. Yeah, it's a lighter coloured one. It can't be that because that is the snowman. I do oh yeah, I wound it up differently for some reason. This one ah uh, yeah this one was wound up by hand which I then realised was a silly idea when I could get Jimmy to do it on the All Wind Run Swift for me. <laughs> I think that's the one. So yeah. Can I hold five minis in one hand? Yes. There we go. Those are the Oceanus minis? Yeah. Oceanus minis by Mr. B's Yarn. They are just gorgeous. I'm squishing them a little bit. They don't deserve that. <laughs> there we go. Right. There we are. 
So you can see, I think it said you need like 1.3 kilos of the white yarn for this. So I did just go fairly cheap and cheerful. Um, but I'm pretty pleased with how this is working up. So um, this is cheaper than the yarn that is recommended within the pattern. Um, it's King Cole Comfort 4 Ply, so I would recommend that um, if you want a cheaper alternative um, to go as a neutral in your blankets. It is just a fully acrylic yarn, I think. And it's just the white colour, yeah. 60% uh, acrylic, 40% nylon. And you get 480 yards per 100 grams. It's machine washable. Yeah. I'm not going to be able to see, but it is just a basic white yarn. Oh, there we go. So, yeah. That's the last whip. And then, I'm so tired right now. <laughs> This is going to be so long, and I haven't even done acquisitions yet. If you are still here with me, I applaud you. Thank you for your efforts <laughs> and for sticking with me through this. So, first thing, um, I will continue along the Mr. Bees yarn theme for now and show you something which I ordered at the same time as the Oceanus minis and it is a full 100 gram skein of their colourway Oceanus which isn't it just gorgeous how could you not want this <laughs> I couldn't resist I think it was um was it there they were participating in the Yorkshire Yarn Fest, I think. Um, or were they? I think they were. I think they were doing the um, Yorkshire Yarn Fest when I ordered this. I can't quite remember. But I remember there was a video. But I kind of already knew what I wanted before the day. So I was uh, primed and ready for the update. Because you, you do sort of need to be ready for some of their updates now because um, some of their colour colourways do sell out, especially the mini sets, do sell out quite quickly. They're quite popular and for good reason. So, uh, yeah. But yeah, this colourway is absolutely gorgeous. I thought this would make a really lovely pair of socks for Jimmy because he is into the more neutrals, but he does like blues. So I thought this wouldn't be overly crazy. I thought this might be nice for him at some point. So, yeah. That is one acquisition. Um, another acquisition, I'll show you this, from West Green Loft Yarns. So I ordered these two, which are the same colourway. It's getting blown out a little bit. That's a bit better. Yeah, sort of like a, a very light apple green, and it's the Eau de Nil colourway. I ordered two different colour options. The other one is this, their Fog colourway, um, which is the colour I've decided to go with for a super secret project, which I can't tell you anything about and I can't show you. Um, but I wanted to show you the yarn because I bought that, so... I've gone with this colourway, but I thought this would make a really gorgeous shawl at some point. So that's that. Next I have, oh, sorry about the crinkling, but it'll be worth it. I've got a gorgeous mini set from Pixie Yarns. And this is her favourite mini set, I think it's called. I'll show you the other side. So it's 10 of her most popular colourways, all in mini form. Isn't that amazing? I just love them. I'm not sure if I could name every single one, but they are gorgeous, I love them. So I've kind of got 
an idea of a cowl design for these. But that's all I'll say about that for now. Next up, I've got two skeins of Stranded Dye Works, which is on her BFL nylon base. It is fingering weight, but the yardage is such that I'm going to be using it as a substitute for a sport weight because you get, it's like a slightly thicker, uh, slightly heavier fingering weight because you get 365 meters or 400 yards. And I've got this, this is just the perfect color to use for a crochet t-shirt, which I've wanted to do for the longest time. So, oh yeah, it's her patisserie colorway, I've got to say. So yeah, BFL nylon, patisserie. It's just gorgeous, I love it. And one last thing, which hopefully my camera battery allows me to show you, because it is flashing. Um, and this is three skeins of sport weight from Mr. B's yarn, which Claire was so generous and surprised me by sending to me. This is not a base that they will be carrying in their shop, but it was one they sort of, she toyed around with and um, she knew I'd been on the lookout for some sport weight, I think, so. She dyed up some of the, I think these are some of the colorways which are in the Rosie Lee min, uh, minis. Is, is it the Rose mini set? One of the colorways is Rosie Lee, and that's the middle one here, which is just beautiful. Um, this purple is Rhapsody, and this gorgeousness is Bronte. Just look at those specs. This uh, is a sport weight base and it's 50% Surrey Alpaca, 50% Merino. You get 300 meters per 100 grams. Um, they won't be selling this in the shop, but I wanted to show it anyway because it shows off some of their gorgeous colorways. Okay, so I think that's gotta become something like a gorgeous three color shawl at some point. Just so soft. Um, I know I was just blown away when, when Claire um, sent them to me. It just arrived in the post. I was like, I don't remember ordering anything at that particular time. I was like, have I started ordering things in my sleep that I now don't remember? <laughs> um, but yeah, I opened it up and it was a lovely note from Claire. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I, it was really, really lovely and cheered me up. So I'll treasure these and turn them into something really lovely. So yeah, that was everything, finally. Um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you're still with me, thank you even more. <laughs> because that is some dedication right there. Um, I really hope you're all having a good time at the moment. I know things are difficult. Everything is different everywhere. Um, I've not got much time left. <laughs>